The prognosis scheduling module is extremely flexible. A majority of the things that you see on the screen can be customized, such as the color of the appointments, the length of the appointment times. The green that you see in the background is the provider schedule template that can be templated so that specific appointments are available in specific times, such as new patients every 30 minutes or established patients at the top of the hour. You can also give some additional instructions to your staff, such as the location the provider will be available in. In this case, we just have our location showing in green, and anywhere that's gray does not have a schedule template. You can select how many appointments are available to be able to be selected in each encounter, as well as the specific encounter types. You can also give certain staff members the ability to override or to block the schedule for appointments, lunches, things like that. The schedule can be viewed for a specific provider on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and then you can also view providers side by side. You can select a specific number of providers that you'd like to be able to view at one time. So if you have a scheduling staff member who works with specific providers, you can set them up with a custom view. And then our resource scheduling gives you the ability to schedule appointments that you don't want to mix into the provider's schedule, such as things that require staff time, vaccination, specific procedures, things like that. To schedule an established patient, super simple. Just double click the time slot that you'd like to schedule. Start typing the patient's name. Select the patient from the list. Choose the encounter type. It will default to an encounter type of your choosing, and then the list of encounter types that are within the system are your encounter types for your specific practice. You can have as many as you'd like or as few as you'd like. The duration of the visit is based on the encounter type that pops up. You can also control some of the documentation that is within the visit so that certain types of visits only have a limited amount of information. You can type a reason directly into the system or choose this button which pops up all of the common complaints that are utilized within the system. This is customized by specialty. You can select the waitlist functionality which puts the patient on a waitlist. So if you're scheduling far out and you'd like to offer them the ability to come in sooner, you can give that ability. You can utilize a search feature to locate either the next available appointment or an available appointment at a specific location with a specific provider at a specific time instead of surfing through all the days on the schedule. You can add some instructions to the appointment. Once you have everything set, you hit the schedule button. To schedule a new patient, very similar functionality, except you click this button, which is the quick register button, and that gives you the ability to just enter the patient's name, date of birth, gender, some contact information, pop the patient on the schedule, and then you can go into the full patient register to add address, insurance information, so on and so forth. Our insurance register gives you the ability to store a ton of information. You can store a picture of the patient. Some practices prefer to put their driver's license here. Obviously, name, address, telephone number. We do have automated text reminders that can be sent at your specific time frame. Those text reminders can be customized based on the encounter type. So if you'd like to give patients instructions, for instance, for fasting for a procedure appointment, you can include different information based on the different types of visits. You can also send email reminders as well. You can store different contact information, such as employer, emergency contact, spouse, legal guardian. Any other providers that are participating in the patient care can be loaded into this physician screen, or if you're a specialty provider and you load the referring provider in this box, we can automate sending the records to that provider at the end of the visit. And we also have a referring provider portal available that you can give your referring providers a login and allow them to download their own patient information, their own records, and then also to send you referrals via the referring provider portal. This billing information tab is basically billing for the front desk. It gives you a quick aging for that particular patient. Clicking this hyperlink will show the patient's most recent statement. You can also set patients up for different financial classes if you need to notify someone, for instance, that the patient has been sent to collections. 
The umbrella icon is where we load our patient insurance information. You can load multiple different types of insurance, primary, secondary, tertiary. We also support workers' compensation and personal injury information. You can associate pre-authorization numbers to an insurance plan and attach those to the appointment so that any prior authorizations done for specific services carry through the appointment and the encounter and into the claim automatically. Eligibility can be run real time or we can also run it as a batch functionality so your front desk can have a report to run each day of all the patients that were scheduled to see if their insurance is active and from that report they can click directly into the eligibility to see the patient's co-insurance, co-pay, deductible, met, so on and so forth. This is a quick preview of our case management screen. A patient can have multiple cases. This gives you the ability to store case information, including contact information for attorneys or adjusters. You can add notes in several places, document when a case is closed, see a ledger to see how much you have charged for that particular case. Similar to the pre-authorizations, the case can be attached to the appointment and then also attached to the encounter and the claim automatically will flow through with that information based on that patient's insurance. A couple of other quick functions for the front desk. I mentioned text reminders. Any patients that have not confirmed their appointments via text, if the patient replies that they are confirming, it will mark them C on the schedule here. This is a list of patients that have not confirmed in case your staff would like to contact the patient. There are also several other lists available here such as health maintenance due. So these would be annual screenings such as pap smear, bone density, mammogram, vaccinations that are due. Patients will automatically be added to a follow-up due list if the provider dictates that a patient will be due to follow up on a visit, for instance, in two weeks. If the patient exceeds two weeks without an appointment schedule, it will add them to that list. If you block a time on the schedule and there are patients scheduled, it will automatically move those patients to a list of appointments that need to be rescheduled. Similar functionality with waitlisted appointments. So this gives your front desk the ability to toggle back and forth between those reports. When they hover over the patient's name, it shows them contact information for that particular patient so that they can confirm those appointments and quickly mark them confirmed or reschedule whichever sort of uh, functionality they need to have based on that particular list. We have both incoming and outgoing faxing from Prognosis. So if you have a patient that you need to, for instance, send records to an insurance company or to a provider, anybody that is listed in that particular patient's register, so that same patient, Daisy Walker, that we were looking at, the other providers that were listed within their record show here. And if we have their fax number, email address, so on and so forth listed within the system, it will list that information here. You can load form letters into the system. They can be simple things such as a return to work letter or thank you for referring the patient, lab results, anything you'd like to create a form letter for. You can also create a quick blank chart letter so that you can come in, type directly within the letter any information that you would like to send. You can attach information from the patient's chart. We also have a similar functionality on the billing side that gives you the ability to create appeal letters and attach any of the billing documents such as the claim and the primary EOB. When you attach that information to the chart, it will attach it to this fax or printed letter. You can also send encrypted email. A nice feature on this screen is this filter button. So in a lot of cases, insurance companies may request insurance records or patient records for an entire year. This gives you the ability to filter by a lot of different things, including case number for workers' compensation, deductible. When you click that filter button, it shows the applicable uh, documents. It's as simple as clicking that button to attach all of the documents for that particular time frame. Once you have everything set the way that you'd like to, you hit the save button. This little button faxes it. The next button sends via encrypted email. You can also print it or share it to the various portals. We have employer, employer portal, a referring provider portal, as well as a patient portal. 
when you have created this document, it gets added to the patient's document list so you can see exactly what was sent and when it was sent. The status will update accordingly. If a fax fails, you'll get an automatic message to the system to let you know that your fax did not go through. And there are also a report to show all the faxes that were sent for a day, all the faxes that failed or that went through, multiple reports to be able to check that information. Incoming faxes go to an attached center and you can utilize this both for scans as well as faxes. Essentially those drop into a little box and your staff can review those documents, see the patient's name that the document is associated to, pick which patient they'd like to upload that to the chart, and then pick which type of document here. So here we have our different document types. We have a patient search. You can also message that document to a specific individual. So as you attach something, if you have someone who needs to review that information, you can send it to them automatically. We also have a lab and radiology review function that anytime you add a lab or radiology result, if the settings are set to send them to the provider, they have a little toggle button over here to let them know they have one lab and one radiology that need to be reviewed. One last little front desk functionality we have is the ability to collect copays. You can integrate, if you so choose, a third-party credit card processing vendor. You would sign a contract directly with that vendor, but it gives you the ability to process credit cards both at the front desk as well as to allow patients to make payments on the patient portal. Within this screen, you would create a batch for yourself each day, put in the amount of money that the patient pays, and then you can say exactly what that money is for. So perhaps we are paying $25 today for a copay and the other $125 goes towards the patient outstanding amount. This gives you the ability to leave notes for the billing staff that you have collected this money and how you would like them to apply it to the patient's account. And then we also have a billing notes feature that gives both the billing staff as well as the front desk the ability to type information, make a little note in the patient's billing. It will automatically timestamp who put the message on there and when, and it goes in chronological order. So as you add those notes, it just keeps on creating a running list. And that's a quick overview of the front desk and scheduling features of Prognosis.